Thank you. Must we are far away, so the connection is ah, oh, that's better. We're about two hundred and eight light years away. Oh, okay. So communication is not as easy sometimes, but we are able to manage. Okay, all right. Welcome, thank you for coming. It is a pleasure to speak to anyone in Earth, on Earth. Thank you. Uh, I do miss it sometimes. Oh, wow. Um, I wanted to ask about the financial, uh, my financial activity. No, not financial, fundraising activities. Mm, yes. Um, I, I just started a fundraising project and um, I'm uh, starting from scratch. I don't have any experience. I'm a research scientist and I, um, I propose to develop uh, electromagnetic therapeutic devices that would specifically activate specific genes or deactivate specific genes using resonance technologies. So this would be like more like flashlights or tricorder, Star Trek tricorder type of devices. And that's very novel and nobody is developing that as far as I know on, um, in the public domain. So um, it's pretty hard to explain that to the general public. And uh, so the methods for fundraising would be unusual. And I'm thinking about either investors or um, uh, philanthropes. So I would I wonder if you can give me any advice on that direction. Well, for something of that nature, you, you may think that you're going to need unusual kinds of advertisements, but that kind of technology is actually uh, fairly common to those that watch Star Trek. So they understand where you're coming from and you don't need to really explain it too much because they already know what a tricorder is uh -huh. uh, in some ways. They don't know what it does necessarily, all of, all of its functions, but they have an idea and they will be like, aha, that's a good idea to actually develop that at this time. So you won't need as unusual of an advertising or, or fundraising as you might think, but you will have to give them an idea of what the tricorder will do, what the functions of it will be, and um, how you plan to develop uh, the, those functions in some way. Not in detail, of course, but fundraising is an interesting animal because w you must have some, um, charismatic uh, thought processes in order to gain some of their uh, their emotional interests. Now their intellectual interest is already there. Their emotional interest is something different. That means that they are interested with more than just their mind, but with all the rest of their being, their money, their um, their in emotions, their thought processes, other than the very initial thought that it's a good idea, they have to have uh, other thought processes that support that. So the thing is about fundraising, it appeals more to the emotions than to the mind. You must get them excited about this product, excited about what it will do, and excited about how it's coming about, and that it will benefit them as well. Because you don't even have to say that. They know that it will benefit them if it comes into being. There may be some of them that will want a prototype. Now, once it is developed, you may, offer, you may say in your introduction that once a prototype is developed, that they will initially get one. And that will be a very big excitement for them a very big plus because they will have one of the first of something of the future on their own, in their own hands. Now, these are the kinds of things that excite benefactors, uh, uh, excite people that are giving money. They want 
to be able to say that they were the first to have funded it. They were one to be able to say that they were the first to also receive a, one of the products and have it in their possession. And of course, they're going to have a very large celebration when they get it and a big party to show everybody how it works as, as soon as they learn how. So um, it's, a, it's a big show off kind of thing. But um, I've seen it happen several times. Uh huh. So um, what are you doing at this point? Um, I have no clue how to get to the to philanthropists, how to find them and how to speak to them. I don't see a way. So I'm looking for the way. The way to find philanthropists is to look who is given to certain foundations. Look who is giving their money to, uh, it usually, um, uh, and even there's a place, I believe, on your internet now, if you were to look up philanthropists, it mm -hmm. would give you a list of philanthropists of the last hundred years, I'm sure. But listen to this very carefully. Those people that have money, the heads of industries, those that especially have inherited great deals, uh, uh, great amounts of money, are looking for ways to spend it. They really are. They, they don't know what to do with all this money. They don't, and, and in many cases, they have no family, or they have a, fa a very little family, and they don't want to leave all the money to the family. They, they know that they would abuse it. In fact, they abuse it, so they know that the others will abuse it. So, <laughs> so um, they are looking for positive ways to spend it. So uh, they, if you find these people, they will definitely be interested in writing off some of their money for a good cause. Now, many of them go to the cancer societies, the lung societies, the heart societies, uh, the AIDS benefits, all these things that are very um, well-known, well-known benefits, well-known benefits. Um, but you are not a well-known benefit, so they may not want to give as much. So that is the problem with not a well-known benefit. They might, but they might want to give some attention to this. And, and if they really like what you're doing, they're going to brag about it a little bit to their other wealthy friends. Oh. And so that is what you must do. You have to appeal to those people that have money to burn, money that is sitting around and they don't know what to do with it. Um, and those are the ones that give to the cancer societies. The uh, actually, I I actually knew some of these people. They're no longer around, I don't think. I've been gone off this planet for twenty years or more, so it's they may not still be around. They were old then, uh, but um, I would definitely check the different um, uh, fund uh, fund uh, areas. There's fundraisers all the time. Perhaps you would want to put on a fundraiser for this uh, and invite a bunch of these people to your fundraiser and say, um, perhaps have a special guest that would uh, speak to them about whatever. Uh, even someone from the Cancer Society, or the Heart Society, or something of like that nature, because the tricorder will benefit all these different things. They will benefit all these major fundraisers. So you might want to have a, a, a rent out of hall and have a little meeting with a, one of these uh, speakers from one of these uh, very famous fundraising areas. Now, of course, I know I'm talking about spending a little money. Mm -hmm. but. I know that sometimes spending a little money can make a lot of money. And that would be actually a small amount of money to get what you need for a lot of money. It's just that you don't know how to do a fundraiser, do you? No. Uh, 
First of all, I'm not going to teach you that. I'm going to tell you um, how to get in touch with these people and say, would you be interested? What would interest you? Give them a little um, a taste of it and a curiosity about it. What would you think of an instrument that could do this, this, and this? What would you think of a, a technology that would uh, do this for the medical society? Would be able to would be able to do this and uh, benefit mankind. Depending on who you're looking at, uh, the word mankind can be a very popular word, or medical benefits can be popular words. You must use some key words to keep people on track. So you would say, oh, this is medical benefit of a great nature. This is advanced medical benefits. These are for, this will benefit mankind in the future by doing this, this, and this. This will benefit you by doing this, this, and this. It, we know that everyone has relatives that are sick. We know that everyone may have some uh, kind of disease of your own. What do you have? Sugar diabetes, heart failure, uh, high blood pressure. This will be able to help determine exactly what to do with those problems. Uh -huh. And it will be much faster than having blood tests. It will be much faster than having many doctor's appointments and spending lots of money. It will be much, much faster. So, yes, you have many points to work with here. And, mm -hmm. uh, and as you... Think of all the different benefits, less cost, less uh, time, less time spent at the, at the doctor's office, less hassle with uh, blood tests and things of this nature, um, more accuracy when, uh, when uh, giving information about the, the system, the blood, the, whatever it is. You can list all your pluses. This is, this is partly what they want to know. Now, your thing is you want to know who these people are. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, you must go and find out who does all the donating to these kinds of funds and these kinds of things. Even if in your no own neighborhood, who, did it, who gives money to, to your orchestras? Who gives money to the, the park systems? Who gives money to the zoo? Who gives money to these kinds of things? These kinds of organization depend on donations. You must look to see who gives money to the art museum? Who gives money to these kinds of things? Because they are donation oriented. So you may be able to go into the art museum and see a list of people that are, uh, that are donators that have given donations on the wall because their name will be there and say, this, these people donated. So, and you'll see that at the zoo, you'll see that at many other places where they depend on donations to survive. And then mm -hmm. the donators will be listed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Must get a list of these uh, people. Now, you're going to say, well, a name does not do me any good if I don't know where they live or what they're doing or whatever. Uh -huh. So you will have to know. Um, I would talk to the museum or the zoo or the, whoever it is and say, uh, which of these people are your current donators? I would like to also talk to them about donations. Uh-huh. And they may give you a list of their most current donators and tell you uh, that, um, uh, and you might want to give, <laughs> it's funny, but if you give them a, a small donation, they'll be very much more helpful. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So set aside a hundred dollars or something 
say, I want to give a donation to the zoo, but I also want to know who else gives donations to the zoo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The thing is, you have to give a little money to make a little money. It just works that way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And well, um, so you have I given you any ideas at all? Okay, suppose I found uh, uh, a name and the phone number and the email. What do I do next? You, you, have you already uh, written down what you want to say to them or, or what yeah. is your pitch? Have you already written that down? Yeah, yeah. I did, yeah. I would then write to them and say, would you be interested in some information on um, this particular item, which I am developing. I am looking for those that would be interested in donating some funds toward this project. Your name will be mentioned. Uh, you would get a prototype when it is developed. Many of these things. And then put your name, I, I would actually have your name and anybody of notoriety that is working with you or people from other places so that, and even put your phone number there so that they can call you and verify that it's a true, that you are truly a person and it's not just an automatic mailing, that it's not just a scam of some sort. Um, but a lot of people will think that, oh, tricorder, that sounds like a scam to me. So you have to uh, show, show the information in a way that is not hokey. So hokey is a human word. Right. Um, but it is difficult because many will still think, let me think for a moment. You see, I had a name. I had a name that was reputable, mm -hmm. that was well known to many. So I didn't, I, I didn't have to prove myself. I could just send out the information and they would know who I was. You, on the other hand, have to prove yourself in some way that you are credible and that you have, uh, you, you can tell them your degrees and everything else. They can uh, try to look you up or whatever, but some will still be doubtful in this day and age where so many have been taken. Mm -hmm. um, but, one moment, please. Yes, you have credentials. You must give them. Mm -hmm. And the credentials of those that are working with you so that they know that there are uh, genuine scientific work going on here. Mm -hmm. And give the name of your business. Mm -hmm. That will also, they will be able to look that up and find that it is uh, a true business. Mm -hmm. And then yep. offer them to speak to them about this if they wish. Mm -hmm. Or if they wish to have more information, or give them a second letter or give them a second uh, uh, bit of information about what is happening what your progress is since the last time you spoke to them, things of this nature. It, fundraising is one of the most difficult things there is. Mm -hmm. it's not an easy process. Um, they have to be convinced that this is a good, a good way to go with their money. But some of them are just oddballs and will give it to you anyway. But uh, some of them are very strange and neurotic and paranoid. And so they will, those would be the ones that will not uh, look into something that does not seem very big. It doesn't have a big name. So, but still, I'm, ra I'm rambling because as I ramble, I'm throwing out ideas at the same time. Right, and I'm, right. uh -huh. I'm, I'm thinking on my feet for you because... You are not well known and you are a scientist, both places mm -hmm. I did not work from, really. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that it does work the same for everyone in some ways. But mm -hmm. you will become no, uh, someone of notoriety. You will become someone that 
has some interest to the people. And you actually, you can tell them what you have worked upon in the past. That's also mm -hmm. good. And that you've had grants from the government. Uh -huh, that is, uh -huh. you mentioned those grants and what they were for. Um, because that is important that they know that you were supported by the government at one time. That's uh -huh. an, an amazing positive plus for you. Uh huh. Uh huh. And they will be able to substantiate that through the government. Uh, right. And that's a very big plus. Yes. Uh huh. Um, you can even tell them where, uh, out of what city, those grants were given. Uh, Washington D.C. or wherever. Uh -huh. Uh huh. You can. Uh, do you have a name of anyone that is in charge of grants or has approved any of your grants? Um, no, it is always a collective decision. Yes, I think so as well. But the grants are listed online, so it's very easy. Yes. Oh. So you can use that as your uh, positive reinforcement you, uh, in the sense that you can look up the grants that I've already won. And that uh -huh. means that the government is working with you. Right. Uh -huh. And you can also mention that, that I am working with the government, blah, 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 but it's all positive. I am not, we're not doing anything th that would cause any harm, but we are looking for medical breakthroughs. And this right. uh -huh. particular machine will be an advance in uh, the speed of medical technology to be able to determine what is wrong with people much faster than blood tests, uh, MRIs, and things of this nature. Uh huh. So there are a couple of questions which I kind of trying to figure out. One is um, the tricorder is a copyrighted word, so I cannot use it in any of advertisement. Correct. You can, can say though. You can say like the. You can use your own name for it, but say uh, similar to the tricorder used in Star Trek. And then uh, because you are not using that name, you can mention their name uh, to give them an idea of what it is. Okay. You could say, this is called a blah, blah, blah. It's similar to a tricorder used on Star Trek. Okay. And that the way, second, you're not in any breach of contract. Super. Uh, the second question is: um, Suppose I uh, actually develop when I develop this stuff. Yes. Uh, before it is approved by FDA, there's another several years. Yes. How can I give that to people? It is a prototype mm -hmm. that you will be giving to the government that. The prototype will be perhaps a non-working version of what you are doing. No, no, no. My question is given to the, so I, I'm, I'm promising to the philanthropists that they will get the first, first uh, device. So they will have to wait for, until the approval, right? Yes. But tell them if they want, you can give them a non-working version so they can see it and look at it and see the functionalities and uh, show them how, it's, uh, how it would work. Oh, I see. So, but for actual treatment, they will have to wait for the approval, right? Correct. I was hoping Ham somehow to circumvent that and give them an a unapproved version, but I don't think it is right. No, no, you can't do that because if anything would go wrong, you would have a huge lawsuit. Right. Mm -hmm. Without it being approved. But if you give him a non-working version that shows all the different things that it can do and how, the how it will function when it is approved, they will be very excited with that because they will be able to tell their friends, look, it's going to do this, it's going to do this, it's going to do this. Oh, wow. Ah, wow, super, that's a good idea, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh yeah, can... 
a non-working prototype is a wonderful idea because then they get to see what it looks like and they get to see how it's going to function and how easy it's going to be to work and how to, how they're going to function. And, and if they uh, want to buy one, of course, you probably will just donate one to them since they've given you so much money, but they will be able to do uh, check their own blood pressure, their heart rate, uh, their blood uh, sugars, their uh, many of different things just with this one particular machine and it will uh, save them tons of money and time. And that is more important to them is their time. They won't have to go out to the doctor. They won't, at least for certain things, they won't have to go to the blood clinic. They won't have to do MRIs. They won't have to do these things, which are so time consuming. All right. I think we are um, 